TanneraCoach.com, trying to deliver the IOL, but the incision's too tight and the IOL needs to be reloaded. Now, here's me operating. Look at the case here. What do you notice in the cornea? Radial keratotomy cuts, eight of them. And you can see I put my incisions between the RK cuts. I don't want to intersect them. We've also hit those limbal vessels, so you know it's going to seal well. So here at the end, I'm going to try to put the IOL in the eye. Now, this patient is like a lot of RK patients, had a big hyperopic shift later in life. The cornea is very, very flat. So this IOL power is very high, like 29 diopters. So as we deliver it, look, we're trying. I'm trying to do a wound assist here, getting the eye back in primary. Hey, cataract coach, send up the eye there, buddy. And you don't want to go in. It's just too tight of an incision. So what I'm going to do, instead of trying to shove it, I don't want to rip those RK cuts, right? Think about it. That'd be a hot mess. Hey, let me tell you about RetinaRounds.com, our sister channel. So much great stuff. View material every day. Great for retina specialists, but also great for a cataract surgeon like you and me. I promise you're going to love it and learn a lot. Now, here, I'm just going to load the lens myself again. And you can see we're using the C cartridge there to load it, not the D cartridge. The D cartridge is the normal one to use for, for lens powers of, let's say, under 28 diopters. But once you get past 28 diopters, the lens optic becomes too thick. So here we go. Now, before we try to put it in the eye again, I say, you know what? Let's just enlarge this. Let me see. Can we get it in there right here? Let's see what we can do. Nah, let's not. Why? Why try? Let me just slightly enlarge the incision. Now, again, being very careful, let's get the diamond keratome, and let's avoid touching the RK cut. So I'll just go in one direction very slightly. I don't need much. Just a tiny bit more. Tiny bit. And again, again, you don't want to intersect the RK cuts at all because those will rip right open. Now, look, we can get the lens in, and I'm going to be a lot more gentle here. And look, and now as soon as the lens gets in the eye, put the eye back in primary. There we go. Get that delivered in there. Whoosh, okay. But now, what do you got to do at the end of the case? Well, we should probably check the incisions with fluorescein dye, do a side L test. Let's just make sure that those incisions aren't going to leak at all. So now let's get that lens in the capsular bag, get it kind of delivered where we want it. Let's get that one haptic in the bag too. And again, we want to be gentle. Remember, RK cuts, radial keratotomy cuts are at least 90% depth. Yeah, 90 Back in the old, old days when people did RK, and mind you, I'm an old guy. After age 50, I've never even done an RK. But the idea was to go to literally almost 100% depth. If you had micro leaks from the incisions, micro perforations, they thought it was great because it's going to be far more effective in the corneal flattening pursuit. So think about that. And next time you know at least 90% depth, if not very darn close to 100% depth on those incisions. So you got to be super careful not to damage them, don't intersect them. And a patient like this, best wear some eye protection if they're gonna do kind of high-risk activities. One pow, hit to the eye, you can open up those arc incisions. Now, it looks like a toric eye well. Yep, there's the toric marks on the lens. Get that oriented where we need it to be. And then we'll call this a day. But again, definitely on a case like this, why not spend an extra minute and let's just check all the RK cuts. So let's seal up the incision here, a little bit of hydration. Now look, just the roof. Don't hydrate to the side of the incision. Why? Because that's where the RK cuts are. You can rip the RK cuts right open by just your hydration. I promise you don't want to do that. Here at the end, a little more viscoelastic stuck in the angle there. We'll kind of wash all that out of the eye. Once we get that viscoelastic washed out, oh, there's a little piece of leather material. Probably want to get that out too. Get that eye probe in the eye one more time. Clean this out again. This is a case where I'm operating. So remember, all these things that can happen in cataract surgery, they can happen to you, and they can certainly happen to me. And that's why we've got to learn together here with our cataract coach videos. Now, at the end here, a little bit of gentle, gentle, minimal hydration. Don't overdo it. Get the eye back to physiologic pressure. Make sure there's no more retained viscoelastic. That looks good. The toric lens is in the correct orientation. And I'm looking pretty happy here. Let's see, put some medicine in the eye. Here's a little bit of dry dilute. Preserve-free triamcinolone, Kenalog. If you don't know how to prepare that and get the preservatives out, just go to cataractcoach.com and look it up yourself. Come on, don't be lazy. Now, at the end here, some antibody going inside the eye. Slight hydration of the incision, just a little. Let's get that fluorescein dye out. The pressure is okay. Check the pressure there. Here comes the fluorescein dye. No, that's a wax cell. Check the incisions first. But I promise we're definitely going to use the fluorescein dye because I just have to make sure there's absolutely no leaks here. There's our fluorescein dye painted all on. And do we have any leakage? Nope. It looks great. So remember this. this. Now you know why I didn't slightly enlarge the incision to begin with. 
Oh, those are arcade cuts, right? Kind of makes sense. Glad we could learn together. Remember, RetinaRounds.com. It's launched. It's available. It's live right now. Check it out.